ADHDers and ADHD, or ADHD Greater Edmonton Foundation. Um, my name is uh, Tara. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Tara and I live in Edmonton. I'm 48 years old and diagnosed very late in life. I was 39. And how that came about? Well, I spent a lifetime going to special needs schools and way back when, for those of us that are, well, well, let's just say they have had their fair share of cavemen <laughs> um, in their time, uh, they all know what it was like to go to school uh, having a disability and what is what it meant having undiagnosed disabilities. Um, and yes, I do consider autism and ADHD a form of invisible disability because you can't see it, you can't hear it. Um, and maybe when you're younger, there's a lot of behavioral aspects for which the normal world would uh, consider odd or different. Um, I went to special needs classes my whole entire life. In uh, my childhood, it was all about segregation, <laughs> amazingly enough. Um, the kids that had disabilities had their special school, and then you had the neurotypical schools. And then inclusion became a thing uh, where everyone got to participate in um, being in the same school as everyone else. The There was good and minuses. Um, pros and cons about that. Number one, if you had a disability, you were often made fun of. I don't know if that still happens today, but it probably does because a lot of the times when people don't understand something, they'll make fun of it because they fear it or they think they might catch it or whatever. It's almost like having polio. Anyway, um, suffice to say, I was bullied a lot when I was a kid. Um, growing up was not the easiest. Um, I came from a divorced family uh, and yeah you see my cat or at least his butt end in this uh, video um, so needless to say I uh, grew up in a family that didn't quite understand what I had they just knew I had a disability or something that was wrong with me and back then if, if they didn't understand, they'd always uh, either compare you to your siblings or they would um, ostracize you. <laughs> Lovely families that we have. Anyway, um, part of what I have is not being able to decipher properly who's good or who's bad and falling into the wrong crowds is a lot easier for me when I was younger than I would be now because, well, with age comes wisdom and you just learn not to trust a lot of people. And you tend to rely on people who do have the abilities that you're born without. Um, I have a hard time reading tone um, and as well as body language. And I love to read things, so forgive me. Um, but 90% of all language, no matter the culture or religion or whatever, um, 90% of all language is spoken by the body. It's unspoken language. So that means I can't read the average person. What they say and what they do are two different roads to me. Um, I get sarcasm. I learned how to use that quite appropriately because huh, you have to have a sense of humor living in this world. Um, growing up also meant it was also hard finding Mr. Right because I married two abusive Mr. Wrongs in my time. I wanted to be everyone's best friend up until my early 30s. And that's how I ended up in wrong crowds, wrong people, wrong company. And not doing, not it, it was borderline illegal, but I was never thrown in jail for it. <laughs> I did um, pot when it was illegal. And that's, I guess, uh, today it's, uh, well, everywhere, because it's legal. Um, I grew up in a time that uh, having what I have, if you wanted to learn something, everyone believed that you're too uh, blanket R word for whatever reason they want to tell you as to why you can't do it. So 
I didn't learn how to drive until I was 29, and a lot of stuff I lear learned over the years is self-taught. My education is li was limited, and but yet I was a very very creative sort. Um, my mind has a hard time trying to change with the times when it comes to using certain language. I also have a language barrier in a sense where, um, prime example, in the last 20 years the language has changed to using pronouns or using a pronoun first before the person's name, like the he, she, they, them, they, yeah, it confuses the living daylights out of me. And I'm diagnosed with about three different things. One of them is autism. I'm pretty sure a good lot of you have of it, have it. The other is ADHD, and I have social anxiety disorder, and I have sensory issues up the yin yang, um, especially when it comes to noise and visual visual stimuli. So that means if I go to West Edmonton Mall at Christmas, I am done for. <laughs> I get into really noisy places like say a bar, I'm done. Um, I don't do well. Um, I totally shut down and I need people to kind of lead me out. Uh, I become nonverbal, I become very scared, confused, all of it. And it's not a nice position to be in. Um, when it comes to getting jobs, oh, this is fun. For 20 years I've been looking for something either part-time or full-time that isn't so hard on my back. So, with my education, all that's offered to me is flipping burgers at McDonald's, but yet you need to university degree to flip burgers over there because I've been asked to get a university degree just for that. Um, I try for janitorial. I've got my janitorial cleaning certificate but yet I can't get a full-time job doing that either. Go figure, but yet they'll hire two little teenage girls without any experience. No offense young ones. Um, you're more likely to get hired this day and age than say someone my age because we're harder to bend and mold and brainwash I guess. Um, I'm not the kind of woman that uh, follows the crowd or a sense of fashion, whatever today's fashion statements are. Um, I grew up in the 80s so that means I have 80s punk rock with my own style so to say. Um, I love to advocate for um, people, especially those that are older or aging, that have disabilities like mine um, because, well, I'm 48. I have less than 20 years of looking at my retirement. Do you know what I see? Because of the lack of supports that are out there for aging people that are above 70 IQ once you get on PDD, or if you get on PDD, if you're above 70 IQ, you don't get PDD, you don't get anything. But if you're below 70 I IQ, you get PDD and all the resources granted to it. So where does that put a lot of people with autism and ADHD? <laughs> Up Poop Creek without a paddle, I'd say. So these days I eke out uh, a living doing people's homes and as well as I'm also a caregiver and I help people with physical needs. And the same job that I do and have done for it since I was very young in nursing homes before you needed a health care aid uh, certificate, I do the same work for in people's homes. So I help them with bath assist, I help them with putting on their socks, range of motion, basically you're the one picking up the leg and moving it. Um, and I tell you, if I could have anything in this world, is to have a job as an advocate with with the knowledge that I've self-taught myself and just help one person at a time be it out in the community with simple life skills hacks right in their own home to um, helping them find different avenues to help them with their life I mean there's more to having a home than balancing a bank book um, a lot of people that I know who I've helped over the years did have ADHD and or autism and well their biggest mistake was mixing chemicals and uh, mixing chemicals could <laughs> result in your death <laughs> so to say um, 
you'll find that I don't look at the camera very much because I'm also look, trying to think of things to say or do or try and help you understand that if I tried to go for a regular job, um, yeah, I have been actually um, let go because of my disability. I've been called a lazy you-know-what on the job. I've been um, ostracized by co-workers. I've been made fun of by co-workers and by the boss, by no less. I've been sexually harassed more times than I can count on the job. Because I've talked to other women who are neurotypical or average people without disabilities and nope. I'm the only one on the job with ADHD, so chances are I'm the one being harassed. And that's the going norm for anyone with a disability from what I've noticed. I mean, I've got friends with mental health disorders that were bullied just recently and had to go to uh, the labor board and lodge a complaint against their em former employers. They say that in human rights that we are equal in every way possible when it comes to accessing certain fundamentals in order to navigate this world. But what I see is a lack thereof when it comes to aging aspects. Because if you have autism, great. If you're under 30, you get supports handed to you on a silver platter until you're 30 years old. After that... Where do you go if you should need help or if you need life skills training in certain areas or certain advice when it comes to menopause? Yeah, that's right. There is none. As a matter of fact, did you know most studies dealing with menopause uh, goes off a neurotypical or average woman without any form of disability? But yet, from what I notice, my menopause is causing havoc in my life. Trust me. Um, with me average women with menopause brain fog is a normal thing but brain fog when it comes to ADHD is a normal thing too you mix the two together and it's it's hell you are more forgetful you're more uh, your anxiety is heightened there are days where you're so crippled that you can't even get out the first get out of the blankets now I have researched a few things and found that certain supplements, like I'd rather go all natural instead of take, putting another chemical in my body because I take Vyvanse for my uh, ADHD. And I found it helps a lot. Also, staying away from chemical type foods um, or things that have MSG or things that might make things worse for your uh, disability. And it's all individual like it depends on the person as to how it affects them health wise and when it comes to jobs if a lot of employers are not willing to accommodate or even so much as try to understand what it's like to be in your world never mind what it's like to live with such disabilities or invisible issues and I think that's sad I mean I do want to work. I do want to have something put away for when I retire. I do want to have money put away so that I can travel. But how do I do that? When all I face is the negative aspects of everyday employment. Not willing to hire somebody with any form of difference. Let that sink in for a bit. Because I've spent 20 years either getting a job for two weeks and then being let go two weeks later only to find out it was my disability that got me fired. Far be it from me to argue. Logic. Um, I've been called an idiot by my own family. I'm not going to say who, but suffice to say, um, I don't appreciate it. Because <laughs> there's a lot more to me than my ADHD and my autism and other aspects that go along with it. I am a very creative person. I mean, come on. If a person isn't creative, then why did I make this? <laughs> um, just like, if I wasn't creative, then why did I make this? Yeah.
I'm into steampunk people. So, yeah. If I wasn't creative, then why is it that I'm able to find work where there's none to be had for someone like me? Give me that one. If I can find somebody, find a job on Kijiji or Facebook cleaning somebody's house for 20 bucks an hour, that's got to say a lot about somebody who has, isn't able to find work to begin with. I don't, um, I can't get age because I chose to marry somebody that I love. I got my CPPD, but I make $400 a month over and above that. I'm screwed. Because they'll start garnishing every dollar for dollar. So, how do I live? I mainly live off my husband's income. That's it. That's the answer. Our society is hell-bent in making women and people, partners with disabilities, survive off their partner's income, making them a dependent, which I think is absolutely <coughs> absurd and wrong. Excuse me while I uh, cough. No, it's not COVID. <coughs> it's because I've got dry throat. Now, being 48 has its challenges, especially when you have autism and ADHD comorbid disabilities. Not only can you have a hard time trying to find a job, but your anxieties get worse because of the hormones that are changing within your body especially if you're going through uh, perimenopause or menopause. Sure, there's greats with uh, menopause. Uh, your periods suddenly stop and you're saving money on tampons, but in a way, your sex life also might diminish. Your arousal and your <laughs> get up and go, get up, got up and went. <coughs> uh, your body changes. Uh, in a way where you might get more wrinkles or more gray hair or, um, but it doesn't change you as a person yeah you get older you get wiser and you get to the point where you stop pretending to be what every what you think everybody else wants you to be or what social norms uh, are forced upon you to be like because you get tired. You get tired of pretending to be normal, pretending to be like everyone else just to be included. Well, being included is not all that it's <sighs> supposed to be. I mean, I learned that inclusion only means either small children uh, or those of other uh, other uh, differences such as say nationality or LGBT or whatever um, yes they have their own fights yes they have their own struggles but if you have an invisible disability where nothing shows where's the fight in that some of us need to open up our gaps and say something because when it comes to being hired and not fitting in your job because you're well, quote unquote, different. That's where the stigma pisses me off. Because if you're not allowed to be you, then who are you supposed to be? I was born with what I've got. I can't change myself any more than you can change from male to female. Oh, right. There's an operation these days that allow you to do that. But if you're born naturally a female, either, either you're born a certain way or you're not a certain way. Being LGBT is not a choice. You're born LGBT. Just like you're born autistic. You cannot shut off that button. You can't make it go away. You can't wish it away. There is no cure. And it's not a disease. But you can certainly feel proud of yourself for achieving certain goals in your life that you've always wanted to do. I didn't get this far without fighting or advocating for truth. I don't give up that easily and I'm not the kind of woman that will ever give up. Even when the times are tough or when it seems hopeless. 
the words can't never fell in my vocabulary. And I hope they never fall in yours. Be proud of who you are. And don't let social stigmas and norms tell you to be something that you're not. You are who you are. And a part of you? You can be happy that if you are being called weird, own it, girl. Or boy. Because being weird is what makes you special. Thanks.